Hello, I'm Anthony. Today I'm going to show you how my control room and OBS setup works in Cubase. A lot of this stuff that I've figured out um, is as a result of the logistical need for me to be able to play and record music in Cubase, have you hear me in the microphone, be able to mix all of that together so that I can record decent videos in OBS, which is still an ongoing challenge, and navigate the pitfalls of ASIO. ASIO is an extremely difficult to understand concept. It seems to be very poorly documented and there's very little help out there for people who want to use it and you basically do anything else on their PC at all. So I think the only way I can go about this is to basically just dive in and start showing you all of the various components. Everything plugs together in a very uh, homogenous way and it's a little bit difficult to figure out how to actually go about showing all of this to, stuff to you. We're going to start off with Studio Setup because this is really the hub around which everything else revolves. We'll come back to this screen occasionally over the course of the video, but basically just take a mental snapshot of what's going on. We're really interested in four inputs and four outputs. And I've started with this screen today because it lets me give you a snapshot of the whole solution, basically everything I need to accomplish. Outputs one and two allow me to hear Cubase. So that's the stuff that goes to my speakers in my room. It's an entirely me-centric thing. Outputs three and four allow you to hear Cubase. As you're gonna see shortly, getting this information, getting Cubase's audio into OBS. Here's OBS. Say hello, OBS. So this is the software that I use to record my videos on. OBS cannot hear Cubase. That's the problem that we have. That's a quirk of ASIO. We'll deal with that in a moment. So that's what the outputs are doing. Two of them for me, two of them for you. As far as the inputs are concerned, I have two physical inputs. This microphone right here is coming in on input three. My guitar input, which is connected to a Boss Multi Effects unit in this direction, is coming in on input four. And inputs one and two, we're gonna to have to baby step our way there because that's the most complicated part of the whole process. So this is really kind of a very quick sketch of the problem. I need to get Cubase plus microphone output to you, to an application that can't hear it because OBS is basically ignorant of anything to do with ASIO. And when I want to turn my physical speakers on in the room, I want to be able to hear Cubase as well. That's basically the set of requirements. So what's this big deal about ASIO? Why is it so complicated? The easiest way to think about it is that if a piece of Windows software, in this case Cubase, connects to an ASIO driver in your audio interface. So I have a Focusrite 18 i8 over here. That's an ASIO enabled device. In fact, pretty much every door requires some sort of real time monitoring. ASIO is what you use in the PC world for the most part. I know there are other systems. Is there one called Core? Not really sure. Anyway, ASIO has its own quirks. And the real nub of the problem is that it connects directly to the Windows audio output. It bypasses the entire operating system and goes straight to the audio outputs. So when I connect my speaker cables from my audio interface outputs to my speakers, I get to hear basically whatever the PC is doing, but no other application in the PC does. No application can hear an ASIO input at all. Now in order for me to be able to speak to you right now, I have to have everything configured. So this is very difficult to prove let's just have a look at the audio input capture properties as far as ASIO is concerned. See my device, analog one and two. If I drop this box down, it's pretty much my only options. Yes, I have a wireless controller, who cares? My Focusrite audio interface has 18 inputs and eight outputs. Where on earth are they all? Well, all of those inputs and outputs are only accessible if you communicate to that device with ASIO. Going back to Cubase for a moment. This is what the world looks like if you connect to your device using an ASIO driver. 18 inputs, eight outputs. So you might say to yourself, well, just make OBS communicate with your audio interface using ASIO. Why aren't you seeing 18 inputs and 18 outputs there? Well, there are two reasons. Firstly, OBS doesn't support ASIO at all. Up until version 30, which is the current version, it kind of used to via a third party plugin. It appears that that support has been completely removed. I've not been able to find any reference to anybody successfully using version 30 OBS. Here you can see we're currently up to 30.1.2. 
But the problem is much more significant than that anyway. You can't have two devices both use the ASIO interface to communicate to the same piece of hardware. The whole idea about ASIO is that Cubase takes exclusive priority control of that device and nothing else gets a grip. Now, just to prove that I have done some due diligence on this subject, there is a workaround using a program called Voice Meter, which allows you to generate virtual ASIO outputs. And that kind of works. The problem with Voice Meter, at least on my system, and I've got a pretty powerful system here, I've got an AMD Ryzen 9 with a million cores. I had a latency of about 60 milliseconds when I used for um, Voice Meter. It was completely unusable, no matter. I spent days trying to get it to work and it just didn't work. So at the end of the day, ultimately, after a week of banging your head against the walls and browsing all the forums, you come to the conclusion that two applications can't use ASIO at the same time. You can't effectively emulate ASIO, at least not with the non-supercomputer PC that I have. And so OBS, which is a Windows application living inside a Windows operating system, does not hear any output from Cubase at all. So how can I record it? That's my problem. Let's break the problem down into subcomponents. Ultimately, we're going to have to figure out another problem, which is mixing the microphone with my Cubase output. We'll worry about that later. For now, let's just get OBS to hear Cubase. How do I accomplish that? Let's go back to the studio setup and have a look in a little bit more detail about what's going on over here. Do you remember when I said outputs one and two were for me and outputs three and four were for you? Let's focus on this output three and four section. So at the moment you can see that they're active, but there's really nothing else particularly exciting going on as far as this side of things is concerned. In order to understand how this works, we need to have a look at my audio interface. So here's my Focusrite configuration. I can get rid of the settings page. Here are all of my physical outputs. Have a look at this one. I have two output sockets on the back of the Focusrite called Analog 3.4. So these are quarter inch jack outputs. The audio signal that goes out of these ports comes from Playback 3.4. Remember we have an 18i8 here. So we have eight outputs. Outputs three and four, this little fella here, is routed to those physical jacks. Now let's take our first look at the control room. Here it is. So this is basically how we configure inputs and outputs into this kind of monitoring system inside Cubase. The control room is designed for people, not me. I am a single person. Everything that I need is in this room. The control room is really designed for recording audio. In a recording studio, you have your control booth, you have different rooms, you've got your drum isolation room over there, all sorts of different inputs coming into a desk, all being routed together and controlled from this place. So why on earth do I need a control room? Well, it's because the control room allows me to configure loopbacks. Have a look at this thing called a queue. A queue is simply like an extra set of outputs coming out of Cubase. So I've defined a queue, which means that my entire project mix is output to a new destination. In addition to it going to outputs one and two, they go to my hi-fi hi speakers. Remember one and two are for me, three and four are for you. So here's the hi-fi hi speakers outputting to one and two. But now I have a secondary output. The whole Cubase project mix is being mirrored. A second copy of it is being output to three and four. As we've already seen, they then get output to physical, physical ports on the back of my um, focus right. And now I've got two cables plugged into those sockets. So they need to go somewhere. Where are they going to go? Well, they come back into my audio device in inputs one and two. Once again, we're talking about the whole Cubase mix here, everything that's been generated. So just to kind of give you a, a different perspective on it, I'm hearing the first generation sound that Cubase is generating. You're hearing a second generation copy of the sound because all of that audio has come out of outputs three and four, loop back into inputs one and two. And here they are coming into Cubase. Now you can also see that they don't go anywhere as far as Cubase is concerned, they're completely silent. So they're not rooted anywhere. As you can see, they're inactive. But here's the kicker and something that took me days to figure out. I can't find anywhere where any of this is documented. Those inputs one and two on my focus right, which receive the entire signal from Cubase, everything that there is to hear, are automatically routed to the software outputs labeled one and two. We go back into my audio input capture properties. This thing here, 
the internal PC oriented analog one and two, here's everything that comes into those inputs on one and two. Even in the Focusrite documentation, and I checked again this morning to verify this, there is no mention of this internal connection. The fact that inputs one and two are special and have higher priority than the other 16 inputs on my device. So now when I talk and you see the audio levels here that are coming from this microphone, this microphone is connected into Cubase Live. We'll have a look how in a moment, but that's not coming to you through Cubase. Cubase is outputting that information to outputs three and four. It's coming back into my focus writing one and two. And from that point onwards, Cubase is absolutely ignorant and completely agnostic on the, the, the signal coming into that um, into those ports. In fact, I have to make sure that I don't accidentally mix that signal into Cubase. Otherwise, I would basically get doubling. And that's why they're disabled, effectively disabled, marked as inactive, because they're not routing anywhere. It also means, just to finish off the story, as far as one and two are concerned, that if I'm ever listening to Cubase through my speakers in this room, I need to turn the input levels of those inputs into my audio device down. If I accidentally leave them, at, they're usually set to 12 o'clock. Basically, I try to keep all of my input levels as flat as possible, as, as close to the middle as possible. If I leave those input levels on inputs one and two at 12 o'clock, I'm effectively hearing two copies. I'm hearing the original Cubase copy plus the loopback copy, and you end up with horrible phasing and it sounds awful. So I always need to remember to turn them down, I'm constantly having to mess with those controls. This is the physical logistics of making video recordings using Cubase ASIO. It's basically a nightmare. All right, back to the control room. Let's have a look at what else there is to see. Okay, hopefully at this point you understand the four routings and the need for this extra pair of outputs. Let's have a quick look at the microphone and figure out why I'm using um, the control room for my microphone, because I could have a track in Cubase that's configured to take the input from the microphone. Why do I need to use the control room? Well, the beauty of doing it this way is that I have completely independent control of the microphone as opposed to the rest of the project. I can turn the project down completely flat, have it playing in the background and still talk to you over the top of it. So the microphone isn't an input into my project. It's a part of the control room which sits above the Cubase project. I can now bring up this volume and mix those two as required. This is the thing that I'm working on at the moment. I just started this yesterday actually. I'm quite pleased with it at the moment. It's quite thuddy. So if we have a look at the other audio connections as far as Cubase is concerned, it's a very uninteresting story. When we look on the inputs tab, the only thing that we can see is the guitar in because that's going directly into Cubase. I don't need that to basically bypass the Cubase project. You don't as a matter of interest. In fact, you can't add a microphone as an input in your input section and also in the control room. Once that port is taken by the control room, it's not available for use by anything else. Another bizarre quirk of using the control room is that you don't actually have any physical stereo outputs. See, my stereo out is not connected. This track has to exist. This is so clunky, it really annoys me. The track has to exist in order for me to have a slider in my mix control, but it's not connected to anything. So it's just this super weird kind of, presumably when they've first implemented control room, they couldn't figure out how to maintain the stereo out functionality. And so you get this massively clunky kind of bolt on where you have to have an output called stereo out, but it doesn't do anything. It is fundamentally connected to the outside world, but not as far as this output tab is, is concerned. I actually control my output from inside the control room and the stereo out effectively sits above everything. So this entire mix is the stereo out and it's all controlled via the control room. If we have a quick look at the add channel drop down, you can see basically when you grab stuff in, in, in the control room. So I've added um, a Cubase input here. It disappears out of your available connections. So you get one microphone, uh, four monitors, four cues. Those are the things that you can add into control room. I've consumed one microphone, one monitor and one cue. So this stereo out contains the mix of my microphone plus the Cubase project. All of that gets routed through my loopback in the 18i8, out of outputs three and four, into inputs one and two. OBS intrinsically hears that with my audio input capture, which I just set simply to analog one and two. 
Then this is my PC capture. Here's my camera, which is sat right behind the monitor. It's the Canon M50. And then I do actually have a little Logitech webcam, which I'll sometimes turn on if I need a second camera. So that's a little insight into how I use the control room in Cubase. Hope the video has been useful to you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you again. Thanks very much.